Hallelujah. 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 I thank my choir. May God continue to bless you. Amen. You will never lack anything in your life. Amen. God will continue to shower his blessing on you. Amen. And first of all, I know many of you will be looking at me that what am I doing here because am I with a limini? <laughs> but uh, I thank the man of God who counted me worthy, my shepherd, the one that has been living this vineyard, and the one that has been guiding us for long. He has embarked on a spiritual journey. May God continue to strengthen him. May God continue to guide him. Amen. Provide for his family. Amen. As he's guiding all of us, may God guide his own family. Amen. And I thank my leaders here. It is not my right. It is not a right. It's a privilege for me to come here. I thank you, sir. May God continue to guide your family. Amen. Uh, the, the task before me today it's not simple, but I will make it simple because this is what I'm saying. I'm going to make it sharp. I'm not going to engage in Bible reading much, and I'm going to keep to the time. Because of that, I'm going to be precise. I will go to the first lesson that was read to us before from 2 Samuel 19, verse 24 to 30. The theme of this uh, lesson tells us about how to love God. I mean, how to love the King. In these verses, or in these verses, we, wit we witness the reunion of David and the man who loved the King more than his own life. The testimony of the man named Mepi. May people say it. I don't know if I pronounce it very well, please. Yeah, right. Correct me if I'm wrong. We are giving a clear cut example of how God redeemed this child of God. We are to love the Lord Jesus Christ. The first thing we learn on this is love Him with absolute devotion. Metiboshe demonstrated his devotion to the king, David, in various ways. In verses 24, 26, 27, 28, and 30, we witness this. Let's see if we can come to understand the root of this. And maybe Oshet, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king, mm -hmm. and had neither dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, yes. nor washed his clothes. Yes. From the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. Yes. And it came to pass when he was come to Jerusalem yeah. to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore, went and not thou with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me, for thy servant said, I will saddle me an ass, that I may ride thereon, and go to the king because thy servant is lame. And he has slandered thy servant unto my lord the king. But my lord the king is as an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thy eyes. Thank you, may God bless you. Amen. Amen. You see this thing, uh, love King David with absolute devotion from the verses we read. Because of his devotion is what we're going to look into. In the verse my sister read, 1 to 13, you can see, as the son of Jonathan, Meribosheth is the son of Jonathan. Jonathan is the son of Saul. I want you to get it clear. Meribosheth is the son of Jonathan. <coughs> and Jonathan is the son of Saul. They are from the royal lineage. All of them have a stake in struggling to become a king. Metiboshia was with his, Metiboshia was to lead and to ascend the throne. The throne. So the same thing with David. 
both of them have the same equal right to the throne. Yet, David, instead of acting with justice and executing Osibosh, as he had done to other lineage of Paul, he speared Metiboshi. We can see this one in 9 3, and we can see it in 2015. And this tells us that as a child of God, we have more than abundant reason to love Him with every fiber of our being. You can see this one too in John 4 19. John 1 4 19. In Epistle 2 8 to 9. If you have time, you can read this one over. And I have another verse that complements this. That is Romans 5.20. Through Jesus Christ, we have received grace. It is important that we owe him a debt of love and devotion. This kind of love, loving with absolute dedication. A lesson to the church today is the connection of this world with override the dedication, which we can find in John 1, 2 to 15. We engage ourselves in the activities that are necessary before the Lord. Who is Metiboshe? Metiboshe was the son of Jonathan, like I said before. The grandson of Saul. The boy was five years old when he became crippled. His father and grandfather died in the battle during the war with Philippi. They died in Mountain Gibbon by the Jezebel, Jezebel, Jezebel Valley. Learning of the death of his son, Saul took his own life. Some places they said, oh, somebody killed him. He took his own life. That is what I want you to understand. After the death of uh, Jonathan and his father and his grandfather, what became of Jezebel? Uh, Metibosheh, sorry. Metibosheh had grown and had a son of his own, was living in penury. One day, as God will open his own book, whatever you are facing today, one day God will open a good book in your life. Amen. David has one of his servants. Did any of you know where Metibosheh is? The grandson of so, one of them said, I know where this master, and they inquired. And David asked them to go and fetch him. If it's you or me, with no hope, with no trust, what will you do? You will run away. The guy has nothing to lose. He was living in penury. He decided to go with them. Knowingly, they killed all his family. He doesn't know maybe they're going to kill him. He followed them. And that very day, God answered his prayer. He told him, he said, uh, Master, what are you looking for me for? That one said, I need to see you. He said, I'm like a dog to you. I don't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm nothing to you. Why do you want to see me? He said, I should live under the table. He said, no. As from today, you will be dining with me on the table. God will open your book and will let you dine with him. Amen. He will favor you in all your endeavors. Amen. And not only that, he told him, he said, he told the servant that they should bring him to appear before him. And when he appeared, he said all his entitlements, the land, the inheritance, that belonged to all his uh, father, grandfather. He said he's going to give it. Oh, he said, no, 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 I'm not qualified for it. He mentioned the servant that was taking care of him before. That one said, you still deserve it. I'll give you up and give the servant. But as from today, he didn't consider his rag, his tatteredness. He said, as from today, you're going to be dine, dining with me. When God opened your book, you will be in the throne 
with God. You will be enjoying everything. You will never lack anything. You see, life is like that. When you devote your life, you give everything to God. You submit your life to God. Nothing is so difficult for him. Some people will struggle, struggle, struggle. The very day, maybe it's a day, the next day that God is going to answer their prayer. I've been doing this, I've been doing this prayer, I've been doing uh, this uh, prayer, going to this church, night vigil. What am I gaining from that church? Let me go to another church. They take him, they go to another church. Maybe the only church can see vision. Maybe there's no power in that church. He start using his own mind, his own mouth to destroy what God has put there for him. There is a time for everything. And if you can be patient and believe in him, God will answer your prayer. I'm a living testimony. I don't know how to pray. I have never seen any vision. God has never opened my eyes since I've been in this church for more than 24. I never see anything. If people do, woo -woo, I don't see it. But God gave me my own power. When I'm in trouble, if I have any problem, I talk to him, like my friend. I never allow anything to bother me. I said, you see it all. My wife will say, who are you talking to? I'll be talking like I'm talking to my boy. I relate with him. I don't need intermediary between myself and him. And whatever I has, he will do it for me. And he has always been doing it. When I see, I was watching a video, I wanted to send it to Wole Victor. It was uh, about a few days ago. I saw how some people are struggling, crossing from Vermont, crossing somewhere to go, just to have a paper to live, to have a stay to work. Now I look back, I look at myself, and Ingrid, how God gave it to me on a platter of gold. I never struggled for it. I never had a passport all my life. The time I was buying cocoa, I wanted to be buying cocoa from Cameroon. That was the time they asked me to go and get a passport. But those guys said they would smuggle it to acquire bomb for me. Most of you that know Nigeria very well. I stay in the hotel there, they smuggle it. When I load two trailers, I come back to Lagos. I don't need the passport. But when God wanted to open it, I was making good money. But I didn't have my freedom on it. I have a partner who was more powerful than me. I wanted my own business that I can control. I came one day, I was the first recipient of the lottery. It was like a play. I don't want to belabor you here. I got my green card before I got my social security. And when I see people struggling for it, I sit down and look at it. God, if I had come in this situation, running my mouth, would I survive this? Definitely no. It is not that I know how to do it more than those people. No. I wasn't better than them. It was by the grace of God. And everybody have their own grace. It is a matter of waiting for the right time to claim it. And God will give you your own grace at the apportioned time. Amen. Now, you look at the life of this man, Metibosheth. What do we gain from them and uh, this, uh, our father, David? He said, Metibosheth is a very wonderful example of redemption. Available to those who come humbly before the Lord, the King, Jesus Christ. That is what I want you to learn from this uh, uh, chapter. No matter what we have, no matter problem, give it to God. Look at this handicap. It's a crippled man who was the only one that got favor, that, I mean, David favor. I pray today, the Almighty God will favor you and your family. Amen. Beloved, today, if you will accept Jesus as the Christ and the Messiah, the Son of God, you too can become the child of God. I want you to read uh, Romans 8, 17. 
You will see it in if you devote your life. Now, we children, can we devote our, uh, our life to God, Jesus Christ, and stop running around from church to church, from pastor to pastor? If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, please do today. Believe in yourself. Pray for yourself first. The church you are running to, the same Bible we are using is the same Bible. Here we are not using voodoo. We are not using anything. It's only by His grace. We know how to use the word, this word, to fight for ourselves. That is the difference between us and another church. We use it to fight for ourselves. And what are we learning from this? You see, this church, we give you that grace. You come here, you're looking for a child. God gave it to you. I've seen some people, they're very, very annoying. They come to this church, they're looking for a green card. And when God gives them the green card, they go to my old shop. Old shop, Motiri, old shop, I've seen my green card in the mail yesterday. Please don't tell anybody. Are you ridiculing yourself or the church? Why don't you come here and roll on the floor? If you don't even have, we are just, did you hear anytime we package the tithe and send it to heaven? Who spend it? It's we. We spend it to beautify this uh, cathedral that you stay. As somebody who has a deep knowledge, it costs us $10,000 to maintain this place you stay every month. And God will give you favor. God will give you everything. And you will come when they are dancing. You will dance. You will roll $1. And you can do better than that. You put it into something that nobody sees you. If we don't see you, God sees you. And when you were struggling, you come here, you cry every day. You wake this whole show up. And all the church members will pray for you when you say, oh, I'm going there. Keep praying for me. I'm going to a direct place. And when the woman that is going to give you paper, giving you problem, who do you come to? The shepherd. And when you get it, boom, the church is no good anymore. I've been here. I've been privileged with this church for 24 years. I'm a living testimony. God continue to bless our patron. He's sitting there. Holy Victor is here. I never believed in Celestia. I was an Anglican. I was born and brought up as an Anglican. We sit down, we hardly say, I mean, we never talk. We read it every day. That is, we read it every day. And when I came here, my wife said, he is going to Celestia. I said, what's Celestia? They said, you're going to put voodoo in my life. You never allow me to go back to Nigeria. I'm going to call my mom. And when we had a first daughter, Karen, she says, you're going to buy something. Uh, what do you call it then, Iso? I said, Iso, are you going to put Iso in this, my house? I said, hell no. You're not touching that account. She started crying. When something is... Painful to us, she start crying. I don't know when this man of God will evict my father. And uh, Mrs. Osho, I don't know how they know my house in Worcester. Before I came from work, I saw the pyramid of uh, fruits in my living room. That's how they did uh, my daughter's uh, naming ceremony. Because we were old when we came here, we play again, I have twins. He said, oh, we're going to do it in the church. I said, hell no. I locked the door in the house. So one of my friends came from Nigeria. They were going around. I was driving him around. I had they were doing my naming ceremony, the twins naming ceremony in that church. I stopped by. I saw the wonders these people use their own money to perform on my behalf. I was a shame of myself. I started coming for a year without putting on uh, the sultana. This old man was the one that gave me the first sultana to wear. <laughs> <laughs> and when I had minor problem with my wife, my wife moved to Nigeria. So when I'm hungry, when I want to eat any Nigerian food, I will come to him. He was very young, a boy, and then he will wear shirt. He will cross the street and go and buy me food. Bye bye, guy. You buy me the soup and everything. We sit down, we eat together. 
When I'm tired, I'll go home to sleep. That is the beauty of this church. When you are coming to America, your friend said, oh, I'll give you a number. Call me when you get to Providence. Uh, when you get to Greyhound, call me. When you call them, we disconnect their number. They, will dis they disconnect their number. We have seen it times without number. Where did these people come to? They said, hey, where is the next Celestia church here? And they go there. Alabadi Wale will continue to feed them. They will pretend they will so Sutana. And when God gives them everything, they will now tell you. I, I wasn't a Celestia before I left Nigeria. So I'm looking for my church now. They will go. Their church couldn't house them. Now they know where their church is. That is what makes us tick. They destroy us several times. But this church is still waxing stronger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's still waxing stronger. If I tell you how many of them that stay in this church and left, we are not tired. We are not tired. God has been providing for us, and God will continue to provide for us. But I'm telling you, as a member of Celestia Church, do not stand where they destroy this church. You have heard about somebody, the anointed man. David has a chance to kiss Saul. But because of the anoint anointment on, on Saul, David refused to do it. Instead, he cut little out of his garment. Please, when you see where they destroy the anointed man of God, do not partake in it. It will affect your prayer. When you see anything wrong, it's a human being. They say who can be wise, temperate, loyal, neutral at the time. No man. Go to him, my shepherd. Do it in a respectful form. Kneel down before him. I saw this thing, it's wrong. How about we correct it this way? If he doesn't want to correct it, we tell you his reason. Wolia is my junior brother. But when I'm talking to him spiritually, I kneel down before him because it's God that anointment that I don't. The grace I didn't get, he has it. When he pray for me, I see it in me. So he says, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. God will help us or now to guide ourselves in this church. Amen. If you do it the right way, you will get what you are looking for in this church. But if you come here, you start gossiping, you start fighting, there's no place where you don't fight. You do it with decorum. If I offend you, Alabai, Jerry Ranta, you can actually see me there for him, you like him. And we solve it man to man. When you, when you start doing it, oh, after we're going to fight, we're going to do it this time. What if we have visitors among us? How do you look? God will help us. Let's go to the second lesson. The second lesson is, the, is very, very important because this second lesson talks about forsaking, forsaking favoritism for love. This is very, very rampant. My brothers, as believers in our glorious Lord, Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring, which you see in the chapter, and a fine clothes, and a poor man in a shabby clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here is a good seat for you, or say to the poor man, stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourself and become judges with evil thoughts? That is James 2, 1 to 4. Thank you. That was the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. the Lord of glory, with respect of his person. Yeah. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring, and a goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and said unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and have become judges of evil thoughts? Hear, King, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world which in faith, 
and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him. Thank you. He said, listen, my dear brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the wide to be rich? <coughs> Let me go to six. But you have insulted the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? He wants you to obey the royal law, the king's law, which is two to eight, I have enumerated. The king's law means if you really keep your royal law found in scriptures, love your neighbor as you love your son. That is simple. And this thing is rampant among Nigerians. Once they see somebody that is not up to date with them, if they are having a party, if that person comes, because the person wants to show his love, that, oh, I don't have money, or I'm making myself available. When he greet that person, hallelujah, man. oh, I call it. She just will go away. But if you see another person that know the person is going to give him an envelope, oh, he will run away. Daddy, let me give you a seat. He start wiping it. Money is not everything. Yes. And I used to say it. If we have a house in the streets, Nigerians will be aimed like Nigerians. They say they drink something, you get it, you don't give them an envelope, their face will change. They don't know if you're going to give them when you are living last. They don't even know if you think I read, maybe the clothes you wore today because you have it at home. Yeah. Oh, they, oh, it's very stingy. Mm -hmm. You can't even part with this money. And when they see the poor people coming, is it not my rice that is coming to eat? <laughs> love thy neighbor as you love yourself. If you see him menstruating at your party or your house, that shows you that he loves you. He want to participate in it. That is the only thing he can read. And if you exercise God's love, agape love, which 